Friends, welcome to another episode of Theology Applied. I am here with my homie, Ricky Love. What's up, homie? What's going on? Good to see you. So this is part two with Ricky Love. If you'd like to see his former podcast that uh, spans his biography, I would encourage you to go on to eternalcity.org and watch that. But we're going to talk today about the first stages of church planting. And so, Ricky, uh, say hello to the guests who are watching. How's everybody doing? <laughs> uh, brother, you started in your living room, the church. To walk us through that. What was it like from the very foundational weeks of the church? Uh, what was that like for you? Uh, we started meeting uh, July uh, of 2020. Okay. Uh, so I so think, right in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, so I think a big part of it was just the um, uh, the chaos, you know what I mean, kind of um, of our culture at the time. And um, so it was it was something just to have people over to your house, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think people, there were concerns even about that, you know what I mean? So, you know, I think about it, it's like uh, on paper, this is the worst idea ever right now at this time, you know what I mean? But, you know, we felt convicted by scripture. Uh, we felt convicted by what we believed was true about reality of the world that we live in and um, about church planning, you know what I mean? That, that, that the time was right, you know, to, to plant the church in that moment, you know what I mean? Mm. It felt like that's what God wanted us to do. The people who you said might have been concerned, like, should we even be getting together? You're kind of mm -hmm. like on the, still the front end of, of COVID. Uh, what were their attitudes? I mean, we're in West Virginia, so this is a yeah. little bit less cautious, I would assume. Yeah. So some of, um, you know, gathering people and reaching out to people looked like actually going to their house and trying mm -hmm. to convince them that it was okay to gather with the church, you know, during that time, you know what I mean? Um, which is like a lot of extra steps. For sure. Know I mean, that you, know, you normally don't have to uh, go through, but. So walk know. us through that. What would what would the typical, like, cause you're pastoring, you're shepherding someone yeah. like, look, you ain't gotta be afraid. Walk us through what that might've looked like. Yeah, so I think just being convinced, convicted according to the scripture that um, the gospel spreads through church planning, first and foremost, so it was a theological conviction and it was calling uh, by God being convinced that uh, this is uh, what he wanted me to do with my life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, in my hometown here in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, but then also uh, recognizing that God put us in a real world and there's objective truth and we can know it. So I did not think it was dangerous uh, for folks to not gather with the church. And I know that that, well, we know that's true now. How about that? Right, there you go. You can At the time, the there was all kind of debate you can that out of the podcast. and theory, right? Yeah, so, um, you know, going and meeting with people uh, who are believers and unbelievers and talking with them about that, you know, about as Christians, uh, you know, we need not be afraid, uh, first and foremost, um, that we are called to gather together with God's people, um, that we shouldn't, one of the things that, I used at the moment was we shouldn't go beyond what the government is telling us to do. So okay. the government didn't say we couldn't gather. Right. So we shouldn't be even more strict than uh, what the government uh, was doing. Uh, so th those are type of some of the type of conversations. And we have people that are, uh, are a part of our church right still because of that. Man, that's fantastic. Yeah. So this is a, a podcast on theology and applying theology. Yeah. So you mentioned fear. And you mentioned gathering together is not optional. So can you walk us through quickly, like what text, what theological, biblical argument would you give someone that we shouldn't be afraid, we shouldn't let fear rule us? And you got to gather as a Christian with the church. Like it's not an option. Like how did you theologically walk people through that? Well, that's the most frequent command in the scriptures is not to be afraid. I mean, we ought to be able to find one somewhere. You know? So um, Jesus said, take heart. You know, I've overcome the world. So he's overcome all the death. And that's what we're scared of is mm. dying. So um, that was the big fear with COVID, you know. Um, uh, so we don't have to be afraid of, of people uh, of, dying, of death, you know, because Christ is risen from the dead. And Jesus died to build the church, you know what I mean? Uh, which is believers who gather together covenant with one another to worship Christ. 
um, preach the gospel, um, serve the community, serve one another, be about the Great Commission. And um, yeah, so gathering, gathering together physically uh, in person is not an option for believers. Mm. The Bible doesn't know of any other form of church. Online church is um, not church, you know. Uh, it may be a blessing in some ways, but it's not church. Because church is, um, uh, God created a physical world and gave us physical bodies. Uh, we are um, body and soul and uh, are called together to, to gather. And I think to gather together in person, I think that people felt that during that mm, time. No doubt. Uh, if, for me, it felt like um, death and mourning, mm. not being able to gather together with God's people or pressure not to I should say you know and the word church itself ecclesia yeah. means assembly Absolutely. right like by definition Absolutely. the church you, you can't do any any of the the metaphors images of church what Christ calls us to do without being uh, in person with one another you know, mm. because of the one and others of scripture require um, contact you know with each other that's right church is a physical thing isn't it it's a very Absolutely. physical thing. We don't often think about it in that way, but it is. Yeah. Give a cup of cold water in my name. Mm -hmm. I, that's a physical, like here, it's a service thing. And the church is new creation. So, you know, it's, it's, the big, it's Jesus is the first and uh, to resurrect bodily and then us in him, you know, uh, I forgot what I was going with that one. It's okay. Oh, the new creation. Yeah, the church is the is the beginning of the of the new creation. The first that's fruits of the new creation. That's right. Spill over into all of all of reality. Mm, that's good. How nerdy you want to get on this podcast, bro? You're the theologian. <laughs> I'm just interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about this. Okay, so now people are gathering at your home. They're cautious, but they're gathering. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to transition into a school. Like, how did that stage look? What was that like? Well, I think one of the things that uh, I was helped with and grew in the initial stages is like wrestling through all the talk about how you get started, you know what I mean? And like your mission statement, your vision, your values and all, you know, it can be very, it was very confusing to me and overwhelming, mm. you know what I mean? So it's helpful for me just to uh, just kind of drill down on the church has a gospel mission and mm. a gospel vision. And just, okay, let's just believe and do what the Bible says, right? Um, and I'm not saying don't have a vision statement or anything like that, right. but from that, so, so, so translating that into our church plant meant from day one, we're the church. So we need to get about doing what the Lord called us to do. So day one, we're on mission. Mm. So rather than sitting and, and, uh, and I'm not saying don't do this, but, um, talking about our group as a core team from day one, we're, we're, the, we're a Wellspring Church. I said that in our, our first gathering, like we're a Wellspring Church and, and, and we want to today be about the, the work that Christ has called us to do and to be on mission. So from early on, like trying to build that into uh, the heart of our church plan is that the primary purpose of the church is to share the, is to spread the gospel. That's right. And to glorify God and, and doing that, you know what I mean? So in the DNA of Wellspring, you put in it immediately at the first gathering. We're about the gospel. Yeah, we're so about I mission. Think, I think that maybe the, sorry to uh, cut you off, but uh, I think maybe uh, my hesitation with a lot of the maybe the different stages, like core team phase, you know, whatever. So, um, you know, folks might be thinking or they might hesitate to be the church until mm, you tell them this is who that. we are, you know what I mean? So they might just be, okay, well, we're just a core team and we're just kind of uh, learning about this and talking about this. And um, uh, rather than, let's, we're Christians. Okay, we're gonna, we're a part of this church plant, take responsibility for it. And we're gonna take responsibility for our walk with Christ and our relationship with him right now. Mm. You know? What does that look like in this neighborhood? So we're in your art gallery here in the front mm -hmm. of your new church building. Uh, you got little shops everywhere. You got uh, kind of a hometown, rural feel. What does mission sharing the gospel look like here in those early stages, that first year? In the early stages. 
a lot of informal stuff uh, okay. because we didn't have anything formal. We didn't have any formal, we had a building or any place that we could invite them to. Um, so a lot of uh, sit around the fire pit, okay. you know, or having, we did a lot of uh, cookouts. And, uh, so something we did the first couple of years was uh, we had a big fall event, fall party at my house. This is all. All at your house. Yeah, at the hub. My ch our church started in the house and it's, yeah, man. you know, still hospitality is kind of um, the hub. But, um, and we did a big Easter event. So those are, there would be more bigger type events, but a lot of just informal every day. So for me, the way I like to think about mission evangelism, you know, is first and foremost is for all Christians are called to be about it, to share the gospel and word and deed. The best way that happens is is long term commitment. All right, this is not this is not anything new to me, but um, or I didn't come up with it. But so long term, low key, so focus on um, ordinary stuff as opposed to big mm, events because mm. um, it takes way more. How, how often are you gonna do those? Right, you can't do it every week. That's right. So it takes skilled people. Usually, not everyone can be involved. And then extremely relational, so mm. long term, low key. I think I got that originally from Tim Chester. Okay, uh, so that's been really helpful for me. That's really that's really good. Low key, every day, non pressure, maybe even like we're yeah. not trying to press people into a no. corner. Receive Jesus. Yeah, so it's not any bait and switch, but um, you know, uh, we're having a fall party. We have live music. We have a whole hog. A what? Uh, a a pig. Oh, a whole yeah. hog. Yeah. Whole a whole hog. hog. All right, uh, all right. That's a, is that a West Virginia line, thing? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. A pig roast. Said, I, yeah, pig roast. Yeah. Pig roast. Yeah. So a whole hog um, barbecue and um, games for kids. Nice. You know, and I mean, most people. So that was we did the first time we did that was October of 2020. It was one of the first things that first community event type thing that people This was at your house. At my house. You know, we had we had a bluegrass band. We had nice. You know, and so and uh, we have folks that have joined our church uh, as a result of that, just that one event. So um, I think a lot of that's so we have a that would be an emphasis I think that we have is thinking about mission and sharing the gospel along those lines. I like that. I like your I like your phrase there it's every day not event driven because mm -hmm. we have events once a week it's called a worship gathering yeah. and then there's special events maybe once a month or once a quarter and mm -hmm. if that's the only time we're on mission like mission isn't happening yeah often but really it is in the every day that we go to the grocery store and we meet on believers and i think i think people are like overwhelmed by thinking about like sharing the gospel with someone who uh, who's a stranger or something like that. But, you know, uh, we want people to, to be able to share their faith, right? But it's a team effort, right? So someone has to, um, someone has to set the chairs up and someone has to bring a couple bottles of soda. Someone has to light the fire to get the fire pit going and, and make food and and be hospitable, be welcoming, and then you get enough Christians together, someone will end up talking about Jesus. That's right. So that's cool, man. So you go from being at the house, and then you're meeting at a school, we, and we also trying a, to get into this. We met community. at a bar next. The bar next. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So we met at a. Uh, well, this was. Uh, so our our kind of uh, plan was to meet in our home for three months, and then find a public space to meet. Okay. And again, like right during that time, that's when like there was a spike in COVID cases and there was a lot of fear and just uh, concern. And I didn't, honestly, Chris, to be honest with you, I didn't think anybody would let us meet in this. Mm. It was that bad. I didn't think anybody would be willing to. Uh, and even the business owner that allowed us, it, it required a lot of conversations about how it's actually safe for us mm. to meet. Mm. You know what I mean? So even having those type of extra conversations. Um, so um, yeah, a uh, friend of mine in the community that I, that I knew um, from growing up here, uh, just happened to be my neighbor's brother. Nice. And I happened to be doing what I'm telling you, you know, doing what we're talking about, just 
grilling and hanging out and his brother showed up and was talking about a bar that he's getting ready to open and and um you know i mentioned us needing space and stuff like that so we eventually um sat down and talked and um it was a bar restaurant that was his original thing that he wanted to uh open up and it was a small little place you probably could get 50 people in there 50 60 max and um we started meeting there in november i believe of 2020. Okay. So we met there for uh, over a year, almost two years. So. Nice. And then you got into the school. Yes. Yeah. So that, that business was getting ready to open up. And um, yeah, that business was getting ready to open up. So we needed to find um, another space. So we, we ended up uh, meeting in um, one of the elementary schools in the community for a couple months, I think from Easter of uh, 2021 20, to uh, uh, 22 to um, June okay. of last year. June of last year. Yeah. And then we're in this space right here, which is in the main drag, yes. the main strip through Berkeley Springs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're, you're, you're right in the business district. Mm -hmm. And even as we're recording this big, huge windows, people are looking in, what are you doing right now? Even as we're talking. Mm -hmm. uh, man, tell us about your move from the school into here and how this building has helped on mission and to grow the church. Because certainly you all have grown and are getting visitors regularly now. Yeah, yeah so we were just thinking about, um, you know, long term and, um, well, actually our next step, that's what we were thinking about at the time when we started looking, um, of just thinking what would happen if everybody who comes out shows up on mm -hmm. a Sunday. And we had a couple uh, times where it was really tight uh, in there. Uh, at, at the time, there was a, there was about 50 people that were in and out, you know. So when they would all show up at one time, you know, uh, be kind of be kind of tight. So you know, it's a small town, uh, rural um, area, and there's there's not a lot of real estate, you know. There's not a lot of places that are for sale, you know, um, or spaces that churches could could meet in that would be beneficial so this was not my uh plan a this particular spot because okay. i thought it was and uh, hopefully this encourages uh guys out there thinking about stuff like this but i thought it was like too much for us i thought mm. it was like too big too or much what? money um it was like you know like our little core team or our little church at the time is too how could we do this i don't see this happening um so I was thinking about the possibility of renovating a space. Uh, it was in the same building where the bar was at. He had okay. another, he had a warehouse space there, but it was, it was uh, not as visible as, I mean, we're right downtown here. So, you know, that's why it's a blessing to have good brothers in your life outside of your, your local church. So just reaching out, talking with different guys and, um, you know, um, just talking with those guys and, and coming back around to this seems like the wisest, best decision. And we just need to trust God and, and, and work hard to get the funds to be able to purchase this building. Mm -hmm. So we did that April of last year. We So in November of 2021, we said we're going to take four months. I think it was four months and raise the down payment for this uh, space and um, just God provided for that overwhelmingly in three months love it so um, yeah so we we were able to purchase this space in um, April of 2022 and start work uh, renovating in June of uh, last year and you had a bunch of teams from various churches yeah. Acts 29 on Acts 29 and I come think to help. you know uh, I think it depends on, like you said, like what stage you're at. Like we're small, like right now we can't do this without outside help. That's right. You know what I mean? It's financially we can't do it, you know, and um, just um, volunteer wise, we need, uh, we needed outside support. So we had uh, several churches within uh, Acts 29 and, and, and some that, uh, some that, that aren't, but um, you know, just, people that are friends with our church, people that I've been friends with for a long time, mm -hmm. 
uh, your church has been a, a huge blessing uh, in a lot of ways um, to this work. So, yeah, we had, um, we've had about three or four teams come and help nice. at various times. Nice, man. Yeah. And the whole process, this is what's amazing. Mm -hmm. The whole process was overseen by you as you're working a 40 plus hour a week job yeah. and preaching almost they, every do they, Sunday. Did they have a class on this at, at Grimke on how to be a <laughs> general yet. contractor? Not yet. <laughs> yeah, that one needs to be in there. That That's uh, one of the blessings, I think, of being a, a, a part of a local church and being a part of a pastoral team because, you know, I was able to see... Um, uh, my church do this in, in Richmond. Church okay, we're so, talking about Remnant. So Remnant Church uh, sent us here in um, August of 2019, Remnant Church in Richmond, Virginia. And, um, you know, we renovated two uh, spaces um, and just seeing that this is a part of pastoral ministry as well, you know what I mean, uh, is overseeing that type of work. And, you know, our church taking a lot of responsibility uh, for the work for the renovation, right. you know what I mean? So, uh, so how did you do, I'm curious, how did you do that? So you're, you're, you're a drug and alcohol counselor by mm -hmm. profession. You're mm -hmm. working 40 plus hours a week. You're preaching every Sunday. You're leading small groups in your home. Mm -hmm. You're overseeing an entire building project. Like, how did you do that? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of help, you know, from other, brothers uh, but i think the bottom line is that pastoral ministry is just hard work mm. you know what i mean so i heard actually another pastor in the community uh i'm friends with said this one time because they they just built a new space uh recently as well he said no one will work harder than us mm. that is his his team right no one's going to work the, harder the pastor than the pastors so um i and i uh, was shown a good example of this you know in richmond so you know, no one was gonna, no one's gonna work harder than me. You know, there won't be anybody uh, thinking that um, Ricky's got me in here working these long hours and he's sitting at home uh, with his feet kicked up, you know, watching um, basketball or something. Right. You know, but uh, so I think just coming in here and just putting long hours in, getting my hands dirty and uh, also having a great wife, you know, because she's working just as hard as I am. Mm. Explain she, that. Well, you know, she's putting in just as many hours as I am. When I'm here, she's putting in hours um, uh, taking care of our girls and um, also making sure that everybody's fed and they got drinks and we're hydrated in here when it's, you know, 100 degrees and there's uh, dust falling from the and insulation falling from the ceiling and uh, it's being a huge support and encouragement. And, uh, but there is the there is the nuts and bolts like thinking about what needs to be done, what is a priority, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? The different stages of- How we get to fund this? Of a building process. I mean, it, Google is a big help. There's there's stuff you can look up about um, building um, phases, you know? So, uh, and, and I'll say this too, like before, before we um, started working on this building, I had never framed a wall, you know? So, um, we can figure things out. We Amen. can learn new yeah, things, and um, I think a big part of church planning is you just got to figure things out. You know, you you know, you can't get someone else to do it for you, or you know. Otherwise, you you're know. stuck. Otherwise, you're broke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to <laughs> emphasize one thing real quick because I don't think guys in particular maybe don't think about the wife. You know, we also started our church in our living room, yeah. and. You know, your your wife is like cleaning and and hosting mm -hmm. and like making the space look good and conversating and man, that's a lot of work. Like you don't think about it, but you're basically hosting a big party every Sunday. But then also you're doing your weekly mm -hmm. hosting, and then I'm sure you're having people over to shepherd and care mm -hmm. and counsel. Like that was the first year and a half for us. I don't maybe a couple days out of the week we didn't have people over, mm -hmm. maybe just a few. Same with you or no? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think that um, pastors are called to be hospitable. It's one of the, um, the qualifications, mm -hmm. right? Um, so um, that means we have to work together with our wives to, to do that, you know? So there's 
Um, just like this required some doing general contracting, like we have to oversee the hospitality of our, our, our homes as well and, you know, help out with that. But my wife, like you said, it's a lot of work, you know what I mean? And it is cooking, making sure the house is welcoming and hospi and, and uh, smells nice. Right, man. And my, dog, my great Dane Lulu is not trying to attack people and um, stuff like that. So, yeah, I think, you know, working together with the wives and, and shepherding them to help see this is this is what God created us for. Mm. This was God's original design was for um, two who are different to be united together as one with one leading and one helping and and uh, helping finish what God started in the beginning and fill in the world full of something beautiful. Right. And he's doing that through the church. Right. And he's doing that as we um, as we open our homes and, um, you know, we have to try to create a space as best as we can that is welcoming. beautiful and welcoming and relaxing and, and people can feel free to uh, be themselves and hear and experience the love of Christ and hear the good news. That's good. I've yeah. been in your house a few times. But it's my beautiful. wife is amazing. She's amazing at it um, and she is a huge blessing in it. And absolutely, you know, hands down, you know, um, a man can't do it together by himself mm. you know, as good as he could with the help of a, of a great wife. That's you right. Know what I mean? So it's good. All right, brother, maybe we could end with this. Mm -hmm. So we're in this beautiful space you're still constructing it even as you meet here. Um, tell us about this current space right now. And as, as people are even walking past now, looking in, what's going on here? Uh, you said you're getting visitors now regularly to the church. Yeah. Non-Christians are in the service almost every week. Tell us about that. I think, you know, um, especially in a, in a rural community, um, people uh, understand church buildings, right? So, I mean, it's just, it, that's our culture across the board, but especially in a small town, a rural community, is there are church buildings that have been in this community for hundreds of years, mm. you know what I mean? And they, they're still there, they haven't changed, you know? Um, so people, when they think about church, they think about building. Right. And I think there's too, there's something to, again, the physicality of God's world, that having a building says something to people psychologically, right? They, they, don't think that, they don't think that you're a church until you have a building, right? Um, and there's something to that. We shouldn't, we shouldn't discredit that uh, wholeheartedly because of the way that God uh, made his world, you know? So maybe think about it as opposed to like, also like uh, in regards to how we're thinking about the mission of the church is it is us saying that we wanna be a part of this community, that we are here to stay, that we're not going anywhere, that we love the community, um, uh, that we are here to serve and we are here to give. So uh, our community has a, thriving art community. That's one of the best small art towns in the, in the, in the country. We're, we're hour and a half in DC. We're 10 minutes from Maryland. Pennsylvania is not very far, 20 minutes uh, to Virginia. So we have a lot of um, just different cultural uh, influences. So we, we, have a, we have a long standing and growing art community. I mean, just in my story, you know, um, uh, being in Richmond, um, meeting a lot of friends who are artists and, and being curious and having an open mind about art. So um, it's in God's providence wanting to give the gift of this gallery to our community, but also to, to um, say that um, Jesus knows something about beauty. Mm, that's good. You know, so uh, matter of fact, he knows it best because he's right. the beautiful one, you know. Uh, so um, this, this gallery space, meant to serve uh, our community. And, uh, and and we have dreams and hopes of, of doing a lot more and just giving, you know, art is about giving. That's right. So, and, you know, yes, the, um, the new space, we're here. People know where we're at. Our other, our other space, like you had to have, you had to know like three friends who knew someone who invited you and you had to go around to a back door and right. you had to do the secret knock. And, and we were just hard to find, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's how it is in church planning though sometimes you got to yeah. take what you can get and then you got to roll with it and then God's yeah. providence those are certain steps yeah I think 
you know, just like having kids, like being content with the step and the phase that your 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 church mm, is in, and that can good. be difficult at every stage. You mm. know what I mean? Just we want to love our our kids for where they're at right now, and not be wishing they would go back or or they would be older. You know what I mean? So just um, being thankful to be a child of God and be able to shepherd God's flock at the stage that it is as it is, you know, and to be a part of that work. Uh, but yeah, we uh, have been, uh, it has been, uh, I think it's been encouraging to our church to see like, hey, we put in all this work for a reason and and we are seeing, you know, mm. uh, new people come out and new people stick around and people getting baptized and and that's exciting, you it know, is. to see someone new walk through the door at the, for the first time, you know, uh, and that's why we did it, right? We did it because we believe that this is a beachhead for the gospel. And, a, and a, a flag post in the ground saying that, you know, we're here for Jesus, right? that he has risen from the dead, and we're not afraid, and we're, we want to, everyone to know the love of Jesus. Mm, that's good. Yeah, I was here preaching several weeks ago now, and uh, I mentioned I was going to make a make an apologetic argument, and I said something like, some of you no atheists or might be atheists and one guy right in the middle is going like this just pointing to himself like i am don't an like atheist. that painting off the wall by the way sorry about make you pay for yeah, that i know i don't want to pay for thousands of dollars <laughs> worth of broken art anyway he you have you have unbelievers sitting in here listening to the gospel and you're i'm sure having gospel conversations after sermons mm -hmm. right i hope so <laughs> Yeah, we are. Yeah. You definitely do, because I was here and experienced it. I didn't, I was waiting for a question there. Oh, yeah. okay. So lastly, last thing, okay, we're done. What would you say to anybody who is on that very front end of wanting to plant a church? You know, they're, they're, they've got a dream, they've got ambition, they have a desire, they feel like they're called. What would you say to them? Make sure you got uh, your first member is your wife. Mm. Um, and then, Secondly, is um, having a pastoral, being a part of a local church, and and being apprenticed, and being an intern, or whatever the whatever the plan is. But uh, for me, it was I didn't think I was a church planner. Didn't think you. Were I didn't a think planner. I was a lead pastor. I didn't think hmm. I was a church planner. But having other brothers around me speak that confidence into me. You know what I mean? And you know. Um, and that that means everything. Your calling, knowing that, being convinced by God that this is what He's called you to do, that your wife is on board, that you got brothers in your corner, matters when it gets tough. Mm, mm. And you it will, will get tough. You will. It will be tough. Right. And that's we didn't we didn't talk about that. Let's end on a um, on a negative note. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this has been the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. So that's that that's the most uh, depressing thing I'll share. But my point is uh, having your wife in your corner, having your brothers in your corner, and knowing that um, you got the Lord in your corner saying that I called you to do this. Remember that? Mm, mm. You know, um, that that's what keeps you um, going when it, when, it, when it gets tough. Yeah, God, God has called me to do this. Yeah. This is, I, I agree with you, church planting is the hardest thing in my life I've ever done as well. More pain, more hardship, more sleeplessness than any other thing. And that's why the, the gray is here to, to show it, bro. And I see you got some gray coming in, so. Not as much as you, though. You, so you, you, you must have been very afflicted. <laughs> that's right. You keep it up, you're only in what, year four? Next time we do another podcast, it's going to be all white, you'll see. Yeah, Love you, man. Thanks Thank for sharing you, your life and time with us. Yep. All right, man.